half a league onward, all in the valley of death, rode the 600. This is an extract from Tennyson's Charge of the Light Brigade. It's a poem that Tsetsi Mashinini used on the morning of 16 June 1976 as he galvanized hundreds of students out of Morris Isaacson High School on a route that this country will never forget. <laughs> Tsetse gave me what I never thought I would have. Tsetse gave me freedom. Tsetse gave me the ability to, to be conscious. Tsetse gave me the ability to, to find um, solace where it doesn't exist. Forty years on, a monument stands honoring Mashinini, a pivotal face of a fearless generation. Di Mashinini, Tsetse's younger brother, was 15 years old when revolt hit Soweto streets. Tsetse, very close to June 16, virtually began to disappear from home. Somebody used to knock three times, middle of the night, and I didn't know who this guy was. And he used to wake up Tsetse every third or fourth night of the week. And he would knock at the window and Tsetse would wake up and go, and they would never come back again. And later it turns out that was Steve Biko. So there was that working together between Tsetse, Steve Biko, and a lot of, you know, BCM leaders around the time. Mashinini had been secretly organizing a march against Afrikaans as the main language of instruction. We never heard what is biology in Afrikaans. What is arithmetic in Afrikaans? What is biblical studies in Afrikaans? We never heard of those words. But as of today, is, there is no plan that says as of in the next three years, you're, as of today, it's called a rekenkend. It's called that and that and that, and that is no longer called what you grew up knowing. So that big barrier arrives so sudden that going to school is becoming a big problem again. While the protest was intended to be peaceful, it ended in tragedy as police, without warning, opened fire on the students. As Dee remembers his brother, he recalls the mayhem of the day. It was like a war. They were shooting live bullets, we were picking dead bodies. We were all afraid, but we wanted to fight on. One of those bodies was Hector Peterson's. He was one of those killed on that day. The 12-year-old fell right outside Manasseh Sefas' home. It was for the first time seeing such a young man in blood, especially short. Uh, we were not used to such things. So I, 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 I cried and I could imagine how was the sister who was running alongside him with Mboso. She was screaming and uh, asking for help, you know. Moments before this, Sefase had been told that another student, Hastings Nglovu, had been killed. Uh, he was a, a close friend of mine. I don't remember how I reacted, but uh, I felt out of this world and uh, I was driven by anger. So I joined those who were angry, especially those uh, who saw Hector Peterson in blood, you know. Uh, mind you, if we had guns that day, we would be talking something else. We were only fighting with stones and uh, used dustbin leads as a shield against bullets. He says, they then went on the attack. Thereafter then there was war. Uh, anything that was uh, associated with uh, uh, the regime, be it beer halls, be it their vehicles and everything, was attacked and banned. The protests marked a turning point in the fight for liberation and it was clear that young people 
were willing to do whatever was necessary to fight oppression. When the newspapers of the evening and the next day began to show photographs of Tietzi <coughs> and his leadership of the entire student movement, uh, it, it was not only a shock to the outside world and the outside community, it was a shock to his father and to his mother too. My son, what have you just done? So, so it is on fire. Everywhere in Soweto there are police, there are dogs, there are uh, soldiers, there's guns, there's takers. What have you done? 60-year-old okay. Tukuloha Lekwadi was also in the crowd. You make me feel very emotional to talk about uh, 76 especially. Like Mashinini, his leader, being part of the protest made him a wanted man. The following day, I was on the paper and I was told, ah, don't go home, they'll be looking for you. Your picture is clearly. I go home, I slept. My father was very strict. The following day I left. I never slept home from that day. I left home. He spent years evading arrest, moving from country to country across the continent. Choosing not to follow any particular party meant he had little protection. And while pictures of Likwadi grace the history books, he prefers to keep a low profile. I'm okay where I am. I trained myself to accept the situation and live with it and enjoy it. Out of all this, where one person is passing, say, but, ah, bro, you, you were supposed to be driving an X5. I say, I'm walking with my feet. Eh? And I'm enjoying that. The only thing that makes me feel sad is about the life that a black person is living in South Africa. That's what makes me feel sad. That's the only thing. Because nothing has changed much. The, pe the people are still being crowded in a train like my mother used to do and my father. So... I, I don't think that there's much that has changed. In fact, we've got two classes now in South Africa. Those who can afford and those who cannot afford. He believes that without investing in young people, the country will struggle to move forward. Is our government put, putting enough effort to upgrade the future of a young black child. It hurts me. I don't have power. I don't want to be in politics. Because in politics, dog is a dog. I don't want to be aligned to any movement. But as a parent today, I'm looking at my neighbor's child. I'm looking at young girls passing here. Young men here who you can see that these people are futureless. He says the promise of 1976 will only be realized if there's equal education and opportunity. On the 16th of June, I always pray and thank God. for keeping me alive until today. I think I celebrate that day more than my birthday because most of the people that I was with, especially that I was with, they're dead. Zezi died in exile in 1990. Mashinini believes that young people who strive to continuously empower themselves are continuing the legacy of his generation. Um, I don't think we had a price tag. I don't think at a personal level we, we hoped or expected for any rewards. When I walk up um, Chris Arnid Drive, what used to be all Portage room, 
towards the UJ campus of Soweto. I see thousands of black students free walking from education institution without any hindrance to education. That would have made ZT smile. Today, I see students hashtagging a revolution again. Children who are saying, this time we know. We know our rights. We know. We know the value of education. We know. And today we can determine our own future without being told by anybody. That would have made Zizi smile. The revolution has no beginning and has no end. We are part of the revolution. And then we don't know when is it going to end. But I want to believe that once we are in a revolution, we are in forever. Tula, 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 siswe. Tula, siswe. The resounding message from all three men is that the struggle will continue until all who live in South Africa are equal. Kathy Mushashan, Johannesburg. Yeah.